Hello, this is The Good with Dr. Joe. And to my left here is Dr. Joe. Say hi, Dr. Joe. Hello, guys. Thank you so much, Ms. No. Hello, guys. Welcome to our podcast today. It's The Good with Dr. Joe. And it's 12 noon Eastern. It's 9 a.m. Pacific. What is happening in London? Well, in London town, they're having their um, libations. Libations. What does that mean? Happy hour. Well, what we does that mean? getting drunk. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, we don't recommend getting drunk. You know, but it's 5 p.m. London, England. Right. And look, welcome to our podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about... A very big issue. <coughs> well, if you remember last week, we talked about Bill Gates and wife separating after 27 years. So today we're going to be talking about marriage. How do you make your marriage to work? You know, how do we deal with marriage during this pandemic? You know, how do you deal with it? So we're talking about that. We want, we'd like to also talk about the stimulus package. Ms. Snow is very excited, always excited. I right always now. get excited about <laughs> stimulus packages. Some stimulation for the economy. <laughs> Some stimulation for your pocket. Yes, that's what we do. So we're going to be talking about that also today. And, and finally, we're also going to talk about the upcoming... What's the upcoming? What's upcoming now? Upcoming uh, a celebration. So we'll talk about oh, that Oh, I also. know what's upcoming. Yes. The Preakness will be run to is this Saturday yeah. at 5 o'clock. 5 p.m. We'll talk, tell you all about that, what you need to know. Anyway, here's where to get us. We are on YouTube, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on Spotify, we are everywhere. So yes, Miss No, um, what, what do you think is really going on with this issue of marriage and relationships? I think it's blown out of proportion. Okay. I think uh, your news media mm -hmm. and reporters all want everything negative and they go to the downside thinking that creates interest, which apparently it does since they keep doing yeah, it. Yeah. However, the Institute of Family Studies mm -hmm. say that that divorce is on the decline. Mm. Okay. And I, I believe them before I believe uh, BBC or NBC or um, Times. Well, well, well I, I don't know. I don't know what the statistic is saying. Um, but the the truth is that a lot of people have been impacted, a lot of relationships have been impacted by this COVID. A lot of people who didn't used to stay together for those that long. A man and a wife who didn't used to stay together for that long, that was something new. That was something they had to deal with. That's something they had to learn to deal with. And a lot of people are not dealing it dealing with it very well. All right, look at look at what uh, uh, the report is saying. That well, now whose it, report is that? In the UK and in the world, you know, in Was the that UK BBC? and the world. Okay, I know, I know. You already have, you already, you already have a, like a a, a uh, negative attitude. Yeah, yes. you know, towards them. But this this is a British law firm. It's called Stewarts. They said they have one hundred and twenty two percent increase. In inquiries, okay, so we're going to give it today. Inquiries about divorce. Mm -hmm. And that this was between the period of July to October 2020. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, that was in the middle of the, mm -hmm. of the uh, pandemic. But I, personally speaking, I know people that have been going through challenges. You know, if I, there are a couple of people I'm speaking to right now that are just dealing with the issue of uh, uh, marriage, relationship, want to go to divorce. Of course, you remember... Uh, Big Gates just filed theirs, and so on and so forth. But what we're going to dwell on, we're not going to dwell on the on the negative because what we do is the, we look for the good, and we'll find out how can you get the good out of your relationship. All right, Mister, you have some steps. You have some steps, or what do you think people can do to keep it popping? Like you said earlier on, to keep the marriage and relationship popping. What do you have to say? I think um, be more patient with each other listening to each other. Mm -hmm. That is, you can only listen if someone will talk to you. Yeah. You know, I think uh, if I was married to someone, mm -hmm. I would prefer it be to someone I could really bear my heart to mm. and say what I really feel without the other person getting married. You know, the problem we have today... Getting married or getting mad? Yeah, getting mad, I'm okay. sorry. The problem we have today mm. 
is we live in such a me society that I can tell somebody how I feel and they're only concerned with how it makes them feel instead of what sh could be done for me to alleviate my anxiety, pain, or whatever is the problem. And, and, and I can break it down. I can tell you, I think, at the Bible, whether you like it or not, marriage is a God idea, you know, to help us try. And we have to understand that there are rules that govern marriage. If you're going to make it work, it's like driving driving on the road. If you have a driver's license, there are rules, there are tests you have to go, and there are things you got to do. And a lot of people want to do shortcuts. They want to do it that way. It doesn't always work that way. I'll go Let, the wrong direction. I'll go the wrong direction. <laughs> Let's look at what she said now about, you know, listening to each other. This, but Before we get there, there's something I want to say before that. How, if you want to have a great marriage relationship, you have to make time for one-on-one -on -one with each other. Oh, sure. You have to make time one on one to, to each other. I don't know what you want to call it prayer time. You want to call it Zumba time. You want to call it, uh, what's that thing now, where you stretch? What's that thing that you stretch? What, what's that thing that you do when you stretch? You do all kind of stretching. Uh, yoga, you know? Oh, yoga. You want to call it yoga time, just sit, just sit back. If you want to blow on each other, blow on each other, whatever you need to do. But you need, I want to, I want to stress the, the, the need for that. At least some once in a day, meet with your partner or your wife. If you don't want to share anything, share your energies, you know? Feel each other's vibration. See how they see how they're feeling. If you if you pray, pray together. That is helping you to bond. That's helping you to understand each other. That's helping you to feel each other when you spend some time with each other. Do you understand? I understand, yes. I think you're right. For yeah. once, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, they, they, that's a good thing. See, when you listen to each other, you see now? When you, I've when, been listening to you, you and see, I think you're right. You see, when you listen to them, sometimes you're able to pick that up. Now, I'm yeah. showing him some respect mm -hmm. for his opinions, mm -hmm. which he's allowed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, I was thinking that um, children can put a lot of stress on a relationship between a man and woman. Because children demand so much time. Especially, uh, like under, let's say under the age of five, they demand a lot of time, and they should have a lot of your time mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's necessary. Yeah. And a lot of times, one or the other will get a little jealous, mm -hmm. and that's not good. This child has to have that that kind of attention to feed, change clothes, you know, just even the basics much less the love and nurturing they need. And so uh, you got to be understanding about that. I think when you're pregnant with your first child, I think couples should talk that over. Yes. So the jealousy doesn't rise its ugly head. See, well, one of the other things, what this meets together helps, it helps you gel. Like, for example, now, uh, my wife, before we, uh, we had kids, we already, we already talked over and over again and agreed on how many children we're going to have. Yeah, that's good, yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about something before it happens, you are better prepared for it. Of course, yeah. You understand? So it doesn't come as a surprise. Right. So the first foundation is making time for each other. And the, and the other thing I want to talk about is the, the, the point that you raised first about listening to each other mm -hmm. and feeling for each other. Mm -hmm. So you thought about how this how you were feeling, and then the person took it and flipped it around, and it's not talking about how they are feeling. Mm -hmm. Marriage, we already said, comes from God. And what does God tell you about marriage relationship? He said, prefer the other person in love. Well, it says a man should forsake all others. Forsake all others. And cleave to his wife. Cleave to his wife. And then on top of that, you prefer one another. To yield. You oh, know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Give courtesy to the, the first person, you know? If you yield to this other person, this other person yields to you, you guys are going to be able to move together a lot more productively. Right. And you said just said something courtesy. Yeah. You notice how uh, I've seen people walking down, married people walking down the street, mm -hmm. and he might be four or five lengths ahead, and mm -hmm. she's dragging along behind. Mm -hmm. That's not courtesy. Yeah. Or she's got packages, mm -hmm. and does he go around and open the car door for mm -hmm. her and help her in? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. But now, if that was some cutie he was mm -hmm. dating, mm -hmm. 
what do you think he'd do? Yeah, they'd do it. He'd want to make a good impression. Yes, yes. But you should always be wanting to make a good impression to yeah. your spouse. Yes, uh, always. Always make a good impression. Always. I remember you said something about respect. Always be very respectful. Uh, respect of their feelings. Respect of their opinions. I know I know my wife for some reason. I'm going to talk about her a lot today because, hey, we are talking about relationship today. She didn't like black eyed peas. Black eyed peas? Yeah, okay. we'll call it beans, you know? <laughs> yeah. And for guys, for guys, especially if you were single for a long time, mm -hmm. you actually have an emotional relationship to black eyed peas. Okay, so you like black eyed peas. Yes, yeah, because okay. you, you can eat that in the morning, afternoon, and the evening. Okay. It's, I mean, how, how do you think I'm able to stay this, this focused and sharp and touch my muscles? That is coming from the Ooh, black eyed peas. Boy. That, that right there is coming. That's black eyed peas right there. Can and I do that again? Come oh. ahead, that, that, you're looking at black eyed peas. That's what you can do. So, so I say, that gives me the rumba. As a single man, you stay, uh, you stay a long time because it's very easy to make. Yeah. You put it in fire, put water. You don't have to add anything to it. That's the meal right there, ready to go. So when she came into the picture, we got married, she couldn't understand what this emotional attachment I had with black eyed peas. But what difference does it make? She doesn't have to understand it. It's just something you like. Yeah, but the problem is I have to respect the fact that she is not as sold no, to black don't. eyed peas no, as don't. I am. I have to respect that. So I can make her. I, I kept trying to say, hey, you know what? I'll be the happiest person on, on earth if my wife can just cook some black eyed peas. As she should. You see, but guess what? I can cook myself, so I cooked. Black yeah, but peas. you see, that's what love is. Doing what somebody makes something happy, someone yes. happy. She she should be, since that's your passion, then she should learn to cook black eyed peas. It's not that she doesn't want to cook black eyed peas. It's just that she doesn't know how to cook black eyed peas. After all this time she hadn't learned, my God, look how many no, no, years no. you've been married. No, no, no. <laughs> Miss No, you have misunderstanding me. It's not that she doesn't know how to cook black eyed peas. It's not that she doesn't want to cook black eyed peas. She doesn't want me to eat black eyed peas every day. That's that, wrong. That, you see what I'm saying? That's wrong. You see what I mean? So black eyed peas, before you got married, yes, you can eat it whatever you want. But now I have to also be respective of her sensibilities, right? Or what her, what she's sens what she's sensitive about, you know? So I should be able to look at that and say, okay, hey, this is how relationship works. You can agree to disagree. Hey. Yes. If I'm married to you mm -hmm. and you want black eyed peas every day and it keeps you happy, have them three times a day if it keeps you happy. Yeah, but it, how about if you are not happy about cooking uh, a black eyed peas or eating... Then or I if, shouldn't have married you. Or if you see, no, 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 yeah. no, Mr. no, no. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't work. You see, that is part of the reason why relationship is breaking down today because you can't respect the other person's feeling. You can respect the other person's opinion. Exactly. You can, you but can respect you the other person's she likes knew before and she, she knew before she married you, you no. like black eyed peas. No, no. Well, you should have told her. Come on, Miss Snow. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Miss Snow. So even if something comes up along the line, you have to figure out a way to deal with it. And, For and, sure. And that brings the other point I want to, to bring uh -huh. up. You have to learn to agree to disagree respectfully. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. If but it, that's life. That's with everybody. Yes. If I am... Democrats and Republicans need to learn how to do that. How to do that. How to disagree respectfully. Right. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Right. The you're people, right. They, they just want to change their partner. You know? I'm, I'm Like you now, you think you're, you're trying to, you know, just change me from... Uh, uh, black to white? Yeah, from black <laughs> to white. Or from eating black eyed peas to not eating something else. No. Uh, you got to respect, you got to respect the other person. You got to respect where they're coming from. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Okay, cause, cause, not yet. No, no cause yet. So if you're going to call, it's 678 708 Don't call while Joe's talking. So we're talking about, we're talking about uh, um, marriages today, how to save your marriages, because a lot of marriages have been going through challenges in this pandemic. A lot of people stayed together who didn't stay together before. And there are a few things that we have outlined so far. Number one, make time for each other. You know, set up. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how, how long, maybe 10 minutes, maybe five minutes. Just sit down and give yourselves that time. If you are the praying type, pray together. 
Because as you pray, you are praying for your desires. Okay? If you are the yoga type, do your yoga together. You know, whatever. Spend some time with each other. Get each other's vibrations. Get each other's um, uh, feelings. You know, feed the other person out. That's number one. Then number two, prefer each other in love. Respect their opinion. No matter how wide you guys are in your opinions about anything, you have to be considerate of the other person's feelings. You have to be considerate of the other person's opinion. You got to uh, uh, be, be, be sensitive to that person's likes and dislikes. Well, the That's bottom line is that quit thinking so much about yourself and think of the other person. Yes. And number three, you can agree to disagree. If you don't agree, you don't have to agree on everything. You can respectfully agree to disagree and then move, move on. All right, Mr. What does you have? Well, um, a lot of people have been laid off from work. And sometimes uh, when you have uh, a man and woman both working, they both lost their jobs mm -hmm. during this um, unhappy season. And that's caused money problems. I think money problems can be the uh, most stressful problems that can enter a marriage and cause divorce. But I think um, if people would sit down and draw up a budget, I know people don't like to do that, especially when you got spendthrifts. But you're going to have to curtail some of your spending and learn how to live with less money. But nevertheless, this causes a lot of tension. And another thing that's causing um, stressful relationships is death in a family. And some families have had multiple deaths. That's really very stressful. So, so if I can put, uh, put uh, you know, talk a little bit about the money issue. So a lot of people always say, oh, well, if, maybe if I marry a rich man or, 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 you know, or something like that, that things would just be good. But look at Bill Gates and the wife. I mean, they, they have yeah. all, all the money in the, in the water. They can but I, I'm just talking yeah. about this, this time in, in life when mm -hmm. we have, because of the pandemic with, with businesses closing, mm -hmm. I'm just talking about right now yes. with people laid off from work. Yes. But you still have to work. This is this is a situation that both partners still have to work together to deal with the challenge. And, and this is a good point that you raise. The fact that you are married, I mean you're married, doesn't mean that everything is going to just be all bed of roses. No. You could there's going to be challenges, there's going to be problems, and so on and so forth. How to deal with it. Together, so both parties have to deal with better. Now, I do like the fact that Bill Gates and his wife came and said, "Well, we decided." I respect them for that. We decided we're going to go apart for now. See, when you do that, that is emphasizing what I, I said about agreeing to disagree. You are agreeing. Okay, at this point, we're just going to go uh, uh, each other's ways. Because right now it's not working. You can take, you can call it a break or whatever. You know, there are so many ways to do that. You can get the job out of town, okay, and then so that you see each other less, and begin to rebuild the relationship again. Because sometimes Be begin when, to what rebuild relationship rebuild. again. Rebuild. Rebuild. Yeah, rebuild. Rebuild okay. the, the relationship. Not again. rebuild, but rebuild. Yeah, rebuild. Yeah, rebuild from afar. You know, mm -hmm. rebuild the relationship from afar. Tend to get back to where you started. Because sometimes. When you are removed from the situation, you have time to reflect. You have time to think. And you have time to, you know, mm -hmm. see what's okay. going on. Well, I don't want to fool with that, and I'm real happy here by myself. And, <laughs> and uh, I've met this new guy, and uh, gee, he sure looks a lot better than what I left. And not only that, he's got more money. Gee, this, this getting apart was really a good idea. Well, it, it, like, honestly, that works. I think sometimes. you ought to stay together and work it out. Yeah, I mean that if if that's that's always be the first way to try mm -hmm. and work it out. And then one other thing I wanted to also add, add, um, add is have a mentor as a couple. Have a mentor, somebody you trust, somebody you can call from time to time. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. A counselor is real good. Counselors can be a great deal of help. Yeah. And um, of course, from me, I mm -hmm. believe a Christian counselor is the best. Mm -hmm. If you're not a Christian, then you don't agree with me. But a counselor is going to be helpful most of the time. Yes. For me, I said whether it's a counselor or whether it's a friend, whether it's a, an acquaintance, someone that you can trust, that you can go to. Because sometimes we do things in the heat of the moment. Well, sure. However, I want to interject here mm -hmm. about friends 
relatives and whatever. Yeah. They always want to shove their ideas mm. down your throat. Mm. Whereas a counselor knows that's not the way to work. Mm. They lay out different scenarios for you and everybody's different. Uh, and your friends, well, this is what you ought to do. Well, that may work for them, but mm. it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you need a, an impartial person yes. to talk to. Uh, I mean, this would be somebody that you have tried before. Before you begin to go into sensitive things, this is somebody you have talked to before generally, you know, about things. And then you understand that they have an impartial mm -hmm. approach to a lot of things. Then you can begin to, you know, work with them, giving them more sensitive issues. Otherwise, um, it would not be um, it, 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 it would not be wise to just put all your business out there. You gotta be careful what you say. Just before we move on, somebody uh, put a uh, a comment here. They said, "Why not cook it yourself?" I, I'm guessing referring to the to uh, the black guy. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, it, well, in, in my own situation, I can't cook myself, and I offer to cook myself. And don't forget that in my house, my wife is the boss. Mm -hmm. See, that's the other thing. In my house, my wife is the boss, and I'm not afraid or ashamed to say that anywhere, any day, anytime. That that is my boss. My that's my boss at home. So if she said no, I don't like you cooking the the, the, the black eyed peas and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's something have to we have to work out. And a lot of people don't understand how important this is. They just think, oh, because I'm the man, so I'm going to do this, or because I'm a woman, I'm going to do this. We use the example of the Queen of England. She was the boss. She of, had to of, be. Yes, because she was a queen. Yeah. And the man actually was serving the queen. Of course. You understand that? Well, but, that's, that can't even relate to you and I. No, 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 no. Let, 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 me, let me compare it. Even though the, the woman was the boss at home, the... And guess who was boss in the bedroom? That, that's what I'm saying. And he it, was. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just the bedroom. At home, the man was the boss. <laughs> And you could tell that the woman was very, very respectful. And that's that's one way a lot of a lot of people miss it. You know, a lot a lot of sisters miss it. You were talking about respect, I think yeah. before yeah. respect, you know, and the, the woman not giving the courtesy that the man deserves, you know, that sometimes can completely they can lose their men by not giving them that courtesy. Yeah, and I tell you what that causes. Mm -hmm. That causes erectile dysfunction when a man doesn't get the respect he needs. <laughs> and okay. Miss Dean Man, okay. Okay. Mama's okay. unhappy. Okay, all right. So, well, I, that that's actually a very big topic that we have to take on that day. You know, what what's the connection between respect and erectile dysfunction? You know, well, there's there, a there, lot. There, there's a connection. You know, no, no, there, there's there's connection. That's true. You know, we just have to uh, deal with it. But for for today's topic, though, what we're asking is. Using that lady, the Queen of England, as an example. Oh, even though she was the queen, she was still very respectful to the to the guy. Even though the guy wasn't from England, the guy was from another country. He he she was very respectful to, to him up to the day, you know. They the, say the she away. deferred to him continually with important decisions that had to be made. So so what does that tell you? What does that tell you? That about tells her me mindset? Philip was pretty smart. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, well, that's one way. Philip, Philip was smart, but number two, the woman had a lot of confidence in her. I mean, in him. Well, sure. And sure. the woman respected him. She wouldn't have married him if she hadn't had okay. a lot of confidence. So, because of that, the guy, even though the guy was serving the queen, the guy had no reason to be scared or afraid. No. All right. And finally, and finally, both of you have to be. United. Both of you have to be on one team. Both of you have to be on one team to make your marriage work. Mm -hmm. The fact that one person made a mistake doesn't mean that you have to make your own mistake. Two. Two wrongs don't make it right. Uh, one of the major things in yeah. a relationship, mm -hmm. whether it be you and I, mm -hmm. or me and Veronica, mm -hmm. or some guy I'm married to, mm -hmm. is forgiveness. Yeah. And, and you forgive, mm -hmm. and when you forgive, you don't bring it up when you get mad mm -hmm. about something else. Yeah. And you're not constantly throwing it in the other person's yeah. face. Forgiveness means it's over. It's done with. And you have to be forgiving in relationships. All kinds. Friendships. Everything. 
if you can't forgive, you've got a problem. That's the only way to make it work, you yeah. know? And there's that song we're singing, singing a minute ago. It takes you, baby. Well, yeah, it takes that old thing, and there's probably young people who've never heard this. It takes, it takes two to two, tango. Baby, to make a dream come true. That's what I'm going to say, you know? So marriage is a dream, and it's going to take two. Both of you have to agree to make it work. If both of you are not playing on the same team, there's nothing that's going to work. And let me put this in before we say goodbye. Good sex will not make a marriage work. Yes. There's got to be more going on. Yes. It, it's, a, it's a package. It's everything. Everything has to come together. But anyway, uh, our time is gone. Thank you so much uh, um, to you for joining in. I uh, just got to tell you, you can forgive. But not forget. You can forgive, but not forget. Well, if you can't and, forget, if you can't forget, you're not forgiven. Okay. Well, it, it, even even if you don't forget, but you don't bring it up, you understand. You know, if you can forgive, and yet you're not able to forget. You know, you. you but if you don't bring it up, every time. If you forgive from the heart, mm -hmm. you've got to forget, and oh. you—that's a choice you make. Yeah, well, there's there's a there's a, a a conversation about that, you know, whether we, the good and the bad of it. For me, I say that if you forgive, don't bring it up. Even if you don't forget, don't bring it up, you know, because the more the, if you bring it up again, then you are staring up in the face. Then you of haven't person, forgiven, you know. So there's there's also a very big uh, a big conversation discussion between forgive and forget. But anyway, our time is gone today, you know. So please watch this video. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. You know, is the good way Dr. Dr. Joe. Joe. See you next week, 12 noon on Instagram. Last word, Miss Nell. And also, the good with Miss Pat. <laughs> the good, okay, the good Miss Pat. All right. See you guys. Hasta la vista. Au revoir. <laughs>